Hey guys, I'm Sean Cheek of webpianoteacher.com. How are you doing? Today we're doing something epic, something that is just out of this world. It's an arrangement, a piano solo arrangement of Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Now, we need to give the girl credit who had played this on YouTube uh, because she is phenomenal and you should look it out. Look it up. It's Gamazda, G A, and then Mazda, like Mazda the car, M A C. Uh, Gamazda, and it's a Crazy Train performance. And it's just awesome. She plays on this white piano and um, it's just really, really cool. So that's what we're learning today. And um, we're doing the, the free part one, teach the whole thing on the website. But um, we're going to do letters on the whiteboard like we always do here by ear. Um, but I tell you, if you want to support um, this girl who, who does this, go listen to it first because you can hear what we're doing. Um, but you can buy her sheets. Now, they're not like this with the letters. They're just actual, you know, sheet music notation. Uh, but to show your appreciation for having this arrangement on on the YouTube, it's uh, you know great to do that. So buy her sheets. Anyway, so let's get going here and see if I can uh, play this even at a slow tempo. All right, so we got a rest to start with, and it's one, two, a three, four, one and two and a one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And then I want from memory here, I think it goes. And then. Okay, so you get the idea. It's crazy train. <laughs> All right, so my deal here is not to uh, perform it because nobody's going to outperform this girl, but I can show you how to play it, you know, break it down and teach you each little part and, and show you what to do. Even some of the parts that are going to be technically difficult, I can show you little shortcuts that are going to make it where you can play it, where you don't have to maybe move so much but still have the same effect. So those are kind of cool. I can, can give you all that as well. But it's on the website, and it's going to take, gosh, probably 20 lessons maybe to do all of it but it, it's going to be a blast let's get to the free part one here all right so we have count one is a rest that's a quarter rest if you've ever read traditional music notation and sometimes i will write those just as a you know um, just to help me out for the rhythm even though you guys don't maybe, maybe aren't counting it but it's one two a three so you have a sharp up in the top a sharp octave like this Left hand has an A sharp right here. So they're they're all unison on A sharps. One, two, a three. So a dotted rhythm there. One, two, a three, four, one. And then and two and triplet. So these are just straight eighth notes. A natural, G sharp, G. G sharp, G natural, F sharp. So you go one, two, a three, four, one, and two and triplet. Now, when you play those, you want them to be smooth, pretty much. So you can use um, different fingerings that help out. People on octaves tend to just play their fifth finger all the time. Uh, but if you, if you have a, a flexible enough hand, and, and most people do, I think, if you try it, you can use that fourth finger sometimes on the octave, and sometimes even the third, but definitely that fourth finger. Okay, so when you're playing this, you can do five, five, four, five, four, five, four on my right hand. It just makes the octaves a little easier. One, two, a three, four, one. And then when you get here, we're to bum, bum, two, three, four. So we want space in there, okay? So make sure it's not just enough to play the right notes, but uh, at the right time, but sometimes you need what we call articulation, which is the style. And sometimes we'll have space in there, short notes as opposed to long notes, connected notes. So you need to to look at the style there. And if you know the song really well, you know to put space there. F sharp, A A, F sharp. Now this is where it goes I I I. So Gamaza does something pretty cool here. She does the the echo thing with with um, just going with F sharp A all over the place. So that's what we're going to do here. So A, E, E, F sharp. So after you play the F sharp, you do this F sharp A with one, two, then hop up F sharp A with three, five. And you just have to get there. All right, when you play it, you, you, there's no time to prepare. You can't, and then go, okay, F sharp. You just got to go for it. So when you're practicing it slow, you might go, 
But see, practicing that way isn't going to help you go fast. You just have to hop and try to land it. Like a frog jumping from lily pad to lily pad. Just, you got to go for it. Sometimes a frog misses, right? <laughs> Slips off. Sometimes you'll miss and slip off the key, but you have to go for it. So you go F sharp, A, 3, 5, and then back to 1, 2. But see how my hand just gets there? I just hop. It's a technique thing. If you'll learn to do that, it'll help you in everything else you play. It's not just in this song, okay? So learn that hopping motion, okay? Just go for it. Just get there. And you'll, you'll split that F sharp and miss it a ton of times. Um... It's actually easier to hit a black key because, you know, there's nothing right next to it for you to mess up. I know you have you know, a white key. I seem to miss those more than I do the black keys. And then you just continue with that. But you go one and two and three and four and. Now when you go to D, 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 E. When you go to the D, um, you're on this, this F sharp A right here. So I go three, five. And I'm just going to use three, five again on the high one. And I'm going to use 3-5 again on this one because it's just, I just feel that in my hand that, right? See the hopping? I don't know how I'm nailing that. Uh, you know, a little miracle this morning. There, yeah, I missed it. Good. <laughs> and then the last one I do with F sharp A with 1-2. Okay, so I'm starting with the one up here on the D. Then I do 1-2 on that one. That's just my choice for fingering. Guys, you don't have to use my fingerings. I'm just telling you, telling you what I'm doing. It works for me. may not work for you. You might some find something that's a little different that does work for you. All right, so if I start here, one and two and three and four and... Oops, sorry. All right, the reason that's hard is because I'm trying to... You, you got to look down at your hand to land those, all right? Uh, but then I, I forget what I'm doing. So anyway, right here, one and... There we go. Three, four, one and three and one and two, three, four. Then we'll learn a little scale. That's just a chromatic scale. Okay, we'll do that in part two, and I'll show you how to do it where um, it's, you know, it's not crazy fast, like crazy train. Uh, it's definitely doable. And then we get to the fun part. get to that but let's kind of recap now and play what we've done in this free part one all right um let so yeah let's let's play that now at a kind of a slowed down tempo and here's a little advice too if you can get to where you can play something really solidly at a medium tempo or kind of medium fast uh, under tempo uh, you, that you want to go if you can do that really solidly then it's not that big of a step to go a little bit faster and play it as fast as it's supposed to go if you have it solidly in the lower tempo markings, okay? All right. So one, two, a three, four, one. One and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, whatever that is, I'll take a look at it, and we'll do it on the part two. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that uh, part one free lesson here on YouTube. The rest of it, are, this is just the tip of the iceberg, guys. we got a lot of work to do on webpianoteacher.com to learn the whole thing. And uh, my thanks to all my viewers, and uh, especially to Kamazda, who, who wrote this incredible arrangement, who played it, and uh, we all get to enjoy it. Talk to you guys later.